we need to talk about JK Rowling and her transphobia and the tweets that blew up this past weekend. So I'm gonna go through what she tweeted and I'm going to, as calmly, as factually as I can, respond to them and tell you what is wrong with them from the perspective of me as a trans man. And just as in a way I'm a little bit late in talking about this and I didn't actually want to talk about this, but I haven't been able to stop thinking about it and then Rowling made it worse, which we're also gonna get to. And I just haven't been able to get my frustrations out. Just writing about it didn't help, so I need to make this video and talk about the transphobia. So again, we are looking at her tweets and I'm explaining how they hurt me personally as a trans man and how and why they hurt the transgender community. So we're gonna start with this one, which as far as I know is the first one that she tweeted. People who menstruate. I'm sure that there used to be a word for those people. Someone help me out. And then she just misspells woman playing dumb. And the thing about this is that people who menstruate cannot be replaced by women without losing some meaning. People who menstruate includes every person who menstruate, no matter how they identify. So it includes women, non-binary, gender fluid, trans men, intersex people, and so on, who menstruate. Not to mention, it is extremely patronizing to do the whole pretend to forget the word thing, but we're, we're moving past that. The point is, wanting them to have written women instead of people who menstruate is an attempt to erase people who don't identify as women who still menstruate. Because here's the thing, she is either implying that everyone who menstruates is a woman, which erases other identities, or she is implying that non-women who menstruate do not deserve the help that this article speaks about, which from the article itself is menstrual materials, safe access to toilets, soap, water, and private spaces in the face of lockdown living conditions that have eliminated privacy for many populations. And whichever one of these she meant, it is bad. Both of them are very transphobic. So next is a three tweet thread. And the first one reads, if sex isn't real, there is no same-sex attraction. If sex isn't real, the lived reality of women globally is erased. I know and love trans people, but erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. It is not hate to speak the truth. No one is arguing that sex isn't real. At least the vast, vast majority of trans activists and trans people are not arguing that sex is not real. We are not arguing that sex is not biological. Some people say that sex is still a social construct, and I've seen pretty convincing arguments to that end, but either way, we are not saying that biological sex is not a thing that exists. Trans people are very well aware that biological sex is a thing that exists. We might be more aware of that than many other people because that is the bane of our existence. What we are arguing is that sex and gender is not the same thing. Sex is biology. It is chromosomes, it is genitalia, it is secondary sex characteristics, and gender is what is inside. It is how we identify, it is how we act, how we think, how we speak, and that kind of thing. Transphobes tend to argue that biological sex cannot be changed. Once again, trans people well aware of this. What transphobes don't seem to realize or don't seem to agree with is that gender can also not be changed. It can sometimes be fluid. Some people lean more in one direction than others at different times. But you cannot consciously decide that I am going to be a man today or a woman today or neither today. And I just want to say that, believe me, if it was possible to change a person's gender, a lot of trans people would jump at the chance. If, when I was 10 years old, someone would have told me that, here, here's a pill or a medical procedure or something that will change your gender and make you comfortable living in the female body that you were born into, I would have taken it. No question. But medical science have realized that this cannot be done. You can't change a person's mind about what their gender is. What you can do is change their bodies. You can do surgeries and you can give hormones that make the bodies more closely match the gender that a person identifies as. That's the thing we can do. We cannot change someone's gender, but we can change their bodies to match better. So this is a false premise. 
we are not arguing that sex isn't real. We are not saying that there aren't things that trans women cannot experience in the same way as cisgender women. You know, menstruation, for example, pregnancy and childbirth, menopause, other things that have to do with having a female re reproductive system. And also no one is saying that just because trans women are included in women's rights means that you can't talk about things that trans women don't experience. Women's rights are about the rights of all women, regardless of what reproductive systems they have. It is not just about the women who menstruate, because that is not all cisgender women either. There are those that never menstruate because of some biological I don't know, I, I'm not a doctor, but I know that there are cisgender women who never actually menstruate. And if nothing else, menopause. Eventually, a cis woman isn't going to menstruate anymore. That is a biological fact. They're still a woman, they still have rights, and talking about their rights doesn't eliminate talking about the rights of the women who do menstruate. So supporting trans people does not exclude supporting women. Giving trans people rights doesn't mean taking any rights away from cis women. Just so we have that clear. We're moving on to the next tweet. The idea that women like me who've been empathetic to trans people for decades feel in kinship because they're vulnerable in the same way as women, i.e. to male violence, hate trans people because they think sex is real and has lived consequences, is a nonsense. A nonsense. It's nonsense. Whatever. If she has been empathetic to trans people for decades, I'm sorry she stopped because apparently she is not empathetic to us now. She might say that she is, she might say that she loves us, but actions speak louder than words. Or from the perspective of a writer, show, don't tell. Don't tell us that you're empathetic towards us. Don't tell us that you love us. Show us that you do. For example, by not trying to erase us or deny us our rights. Next tweet reads, I respect every trans person's right to live any way that feels authentic and comfortable to them. I'd match with you if you were discriminated against on the basis of being trans. At the same time, my life has been shaped by being female. I do not believe it's hateful to say so. That part is not hateful. No, I agree. However, let's start from the beginning of this one. I respect every trans person's right to live any way that feels authentic and comfortable to them. No, you don't. If we take that first tweet again, she is saying that women and only women menstruate. So she is telling any trans man who still menstruates that he's a woman. Or again, she is saying that people who are not women who still menstruate don't have a right to, like, pads and tampons. Either way, that is not supportive. It is not respectful. The way she is not supporting our right to live however we want is that she is not supporting our rights to be addressed as the gender we identify as. She is denying us the right to have a gender that doesn't match our biological sex by implying that biological sex takes precedence. That does not make us comfortable. That makes us angry. And then we come to my favorite part of this particular tweet. I'd march with you if you were discriminated against on the basis of being trans. She would march with us if we were discriminated against. If. Seriously? Trans people are discriminated against. I don't even know what else to say. I, that, that's not even up for debate. I'm, I'm just... I, how dare she question that trans people are being discriminated against on the basis of being trans, especially when that's what she's doing, when her tweets are enabling that kind of discrimination. So we are. We are discriminated against, and yet somehow I doubt that Rowling is going to march with a trans organization in any Pride Parade ever. And not only because no trans organization will let her do that based on these tweets. We're moving on from that one. We are taking the next tweet, which is where she is retweeting someone who says, takes one turf to know another, I guess, and writes, feminazi, turf, bitch, witch, times change, woman hate is eternal. These four words are not the same. You'd think a fellow author would know that. So, okay, which refers to the time when women could be persecuted and executed just on the basis of someone calling them a witch, accusing them of witch witchcraft. The literal meaning is a woman who does magic, and when not used about a woman who actually does magic as nothing more than an accurate description, then yes, that would be women hate. Woman hate. Those two words, I always get them confused, I'm sorry. Bitch is a derogatory word for a woman. 
or the literal word for a female dog. There are some women who do use it among themselves because they have reclaimed it, but if used in a derogatory way, then woman hate, yes, absolutely. Feminazi is usually, in my experience at least, used by white cis hetero men who feel threatened by feminism, so woman hate, yes, absolutely, definitely, I'm not even questioning that. TERF, however, it means trans-exclusionary radical feminist. It refers to a feminist, specifically a radical feminist, who exclude trans people from their feminism, specifically trans women from their feminism. Basically, it's a feminist that says that women's rights only apply to cis women. And they usually say this because they are under the misguided impression that trans women are in fact not women, but they are men who are just pretending. I'm actually not sure where they place trans men in this, if we are part of their feminism or not, but I think that we are likely traitors that have gone over to the side of, it, of the patriarchy. I don't know for sure, I've never asked. Either way, I cannot call this women hate, partially because I would call a man a turf as well if he was one, if he was a feminist that said that trans women are not women. So to me, turf is a term that accurately describes what Rowling is. Potentially not if you would not call her a radical feminist, but just feminist, in which case I guess she would be a TEF. Either way, putting it in terms of this is women hate. Sometimes we say TERF in a tone that implies hatred, but that hatred is not based on you being a woman, it is based on you denying trans women their rights. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? So she's once again retweeting someone, and that someone says, please talk to some queer people, please. And she says, one of my best mates just called me, self-described butch lesbian. It was hard to tell because she was shouting quite loudly, but I could just make out fucking yes. You do not get to play the my gay friend said card. No one does. That is not a card that is valid. Just because one lesbian agrees with you doesn't mean you're right. I guarantee that I can find more than one lesbian who agrees with me. In fact, I am pretty sure that if we were to ask every single lesbian we could find who was right or wrong, more people would side with me. Which is actually beside the point. You are not excused from your transphobia just because one member of the LGBTQ, LGBTQ plus community <laughs> agrees with you. Just like you can't use the N-word just because you have one black friend who says it's okay. That's not how it works. I'm also wondering, what is the relevance to this lesbian being butch? I don't get that. Does that lend more validity to her opinion? Is it that because she's butch, she's more manly, so she's almost a trans man, so she's always, almost trans, so that way she gets a say in this? I don't know. I honestly don't understand. It's also completely irrelevant, but I just had to bring it up because it was so weird. Okay, so we're closing in on the end now. Uh, here she is also retweeting someone, but I don't know what that someone said because I, I can't see that tweet. But what she's saying is, I've spent much of the last three years reading books, blogs, and scientific papers by trans people, medics, and gender specialists. I know exactly what the distinction is. Never assume that because someone thinks differently, they have no knowledge. So I assume the quoted tweet was something along the lines of sex and gender not being the same thing. I don't know, but that's my assumption. What I'm wondering is, what kind of books, blogs, and scientific papers could she possibly have been reading that haven't convinced her that these are scientific facts and not something that you get to think differently about? I'm sorry, but I only have two conclusions. Three conclusions, actually. Number one, she's lying. She hasn't read any of this stuff, or she hasn't read nearly as much as she is pretending. She doesn't say how much, just that she's been doing it over the period of three years. That could be one book, one blog, and one scientific paper, for all I know. My second conclusion would be that she is misrepresenting what she has read. Because nowhere does it actually say that these uh, trans people, medics, and gender specialists are writing about the trans issue, just that those are the authors. Those kinds of authors can write all kinds of things. So in that case, it's an irrelevant argument. My third conclusion is that she has read all of this stuff and she just doesn't care. She is so convinced of her own opinion that she's just immune to facts and just refuses to understand. And here's the thing. I personally think that JK Rowling is a horrible human being for these tweets. They are disrespectful to people like me and they are in fact harmful. 
Now, she's entitled to her opinion. She is allowed, technically, to say whatever she wants within certain perimeters of the law. But when so many people are telling her that what she is saying is hurting so many people, maybe she should think twice about saying these kinds of things in front of her, what, 14, 15 million followers? And that's assuming that only her followers are the ones to see these tweets, which is just not the case. And I want to say that when J.K. Rowling and people like her say these things, the trans community and our allies are going to be here. We are going to stand up to them. We're going to tell the world that they are wrong and that their opinions are not truth. Trans people are valid. Just because you were born with one biological sex doesn't mean that your gender has to match it. No one can tell you what your gender is. That is something that you will discover for yourself. And if it doesn't match the biological sex you were born with, don't worry. The transgender community will welcome you, even when people like JK Rowling rejects you. Now, this could have been the end. It should have been the end. It was supposed to be the end. I was feeling a lot better when I'd gotten this far in my notes for this video. However, after these tweets, JK got kind of quiet on Twitter for a few days. And then yesterday, as I'm filming this, she put up an entire essay explaining her transphobia. I am going to make a video about that very, very soon because I have to, because I cannot not. I really hope that this video has provided you with some insights and I appreciate your support. I appreciate the support of all of my friends and all of the strangers that agree with me. I also appreciate good constructive conversation. So if there is anything that I've said in this video that you disagree with, I am more than happy to talk to you, to try to explain what I mean and to listen to why you disagree with me. That said, any comment that goes into being disrespectful or downright transphobic, I will delete as usual. And of course, if you want to talk about something that you're not comfortable putting in public comments, my contact information is in the description as usual as well. So stay tuned for updates on this story. And also, if you want writing related content, I promise you that it is also coming. If you're waiting for that, there will be a video on writing on Saturday. So thank you for watching. I will see you next time.